these, my buddy, oh, man, that was hilarious, man. I said, he said, but black people don't get it. Exactly. I keep telling you, they're not. He says this, this humor is for black people. He said, I did this show for black people. And he's doing a misdirection. I said, that whole scene, that was something that we always say, hey, man, you know, you put your foot in it. Black people are not looking for you to put your foot in because to, to them, that's fucking stupid. Whereas if you would have said that, you, you'd have to play it another way. All he's doing is doing a misdirection with black humor. The whole barbershop scene. The guy's looking to get his hair cut. The, guy, the barber is still running his mouth. If you look at barbershop, the dude's spewing, talking all this stuff. In Donald Glover's thing, the guy's waiting, the guy's running his mouth so much, dude never gets his hair cut. See, and so that that's Donald Glover's way of doing it. It's a misdirection. Black people go, fuck, man, I came here with you. How come you're not cutting the guy's hair? See, they're getting upset. So everyone's not <laughs> connecting. He says, hey, man, that's, that's hilarious. It's, it's fucking genius. It's misdirection. Sorry, it's not genius. Stop it. Comedians know what's going on. The average American doesn't, average black dude is not going to get that. He just doesn't. Maybe the new millennials will get it. They'll probably think it's funny. But old black folks... No, forty five, fifty, sixty. It, well, the humor we get is is it's a lot based off of cultural training. What you grew up on is right. humor. I mean, if you are a average white person who's middle class, upper middle, mm-hmm. you know, which means you have older parents, then you probably grew up with Faulty Towers and a lot of John Cleese and a lot of Monty Python. So you'll mm-hmm. get that kind of dry humor, misdirection, absurdism type right. comedy because mm-hmm. your brain got trained on it. Right. And then if you never saw that stuff, and then you did see that stuff, you'd be like, what on earth? Why are there priests smacking themselves in the head right. with a thing while chanting? I don't, why is that supposed to be funny? I don't see it. <laughs> see, I, I see stuff like that and think, why aren't there more priests whacking themselves in the head with things in, in everyday life? But I'm not a witch. <laughs> that was Monty I got Python. Better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got better. They put this nose on me. <laughs> You know, it's again. Time is not laughing on it. <laughs> it's cultural. Yeah, <laughs> I love. No, but I think you know that's that's one of the things that. Yes, humor is subjective, and you know people need to understand the the subjectivity of not just humor but all entertainment. You know, I I don't ever ever want to hear Taylor Swift music coming out of a, a musical device that's near me. <laughs> But I recognize that she she is talented. You know, she writes good songs for 14-year-old girls and adults who think like 14-year-old girls. I am neither of those. So I don't appreciate it. But that doesn't mean I can't. Well, yeah, you know. I, that, no, well, you know it's funny up. if you like that sort of thing. No. And and that's the thing, you know, when, when you're looking at, and I'm sort of drawn us back into the Samantha B thing and tying in the Roseanne. You can you can look at Samantha B calling Ivana Ivanka Trump a, a feckless cunt, and you know that's more commentary than actual comedy. I would agree, yeah. But it's it's framed in comedy, you know, as being part of a monologue on her show, which is a comedic take on the news. Versus Roseanne Barr just going on Twitter as Roseanne Barr mm-hmm. and and spewing you know old racist crap. Well, they got pissed at uh, Taylor Swift for singing an Earth, Wind, and Fire tune, and people were like, "Bitch, no, you didn't try to sing Earth, Wind, and Fire." You know, it's like who gives a fuck. I well, mean, yeah. I mean, what, no, what, I mean, it's, I, it's, it's people who people who grew up listening to Earth, Wind, and Fire. No, absolutely, yeah. no, it's I like, get it. Very, but the thing is, uh, you know, when we, when we are are living in an age when you know the the there's mostly hip hop and electronic music being right. represented at the Grammys. Mm-hmm. You know, like guitar driven rock is it's still out there, but it's not the the major concern of the labels because right. it's not the big money maker and a lot of these artists are, are white you know and and it's part of it i i get that you know but we are a, a long way from pat boone doing little richard songs because people don't want to buy race records right. you know yeah there there are things that white artists shouldn't do 
I think it's really tone deaf on Taylor Swift's part, though, because she should understand at this point in culture, don't do it. I don't care if you do or don't think it's racist for a white person to do a song that is originally by black artists. Uh, Don't do it because you got to recognize your audience and the historical time that we're in. Like, be a smart person. Like, right. I was that's what I'm looking some... at. I'm looking at yeah. Yeah. I, I'm looking at the fact there's no way you can pull that off. That would be like when Al B. Sure tried to sing Al Green. Hello, <laughs> dude, don't do that. You're an, you're an idiot. Yeah, I was trying to write some parody songs, and I wasn't thinking one morning. It didn't I had just taken a red eye flight, and I was like. It would be so hilarious if I did a parody version of a Nicki Minaj song. Oh my gosh, that'd be so fun. A parody Anaconda, but like a foot fetish going on. (laughs) So I spent my time on the flight writing this, mind you, so exhausted. Um, And then when I finished, it was such a challenge. And I gotta say, I respect Nicki Minaj so much. She's like so funny and clever. And like, she'll do rhymes where like it's the same sound, but for like eight. Like, forget this A A B B bullshit. Like, it's like A A A A A A A A A A A Right? So she's kind of amazing. So I did it for fun. And then when I was done writing it, I sat and I thought about it and I'm like, I can't perform this because I'm white. Like, <laughs> that would be so poorly received. And all it took was just like a little bit of self-reflection to be mm. like, mm, maybe this isn't the greatest idea considering the time. Right. And the fact that Taylor Swift, nobody said it to her, like, hey, maybe don't do it. And mm. then she didn't even recognize that mm-hmm. speaks to just how removed tone from deaf. everything <laughs> tone deaf right. but like maybe like the fact that she's never made a political statement against anything trump right. has done mm-hmm. like what yeah. the fuck taylor right. um i know i kind of lost a lot of respect for her he's on top right. of it to do that like right. where is she right. is she comp- like is she in a, a silo somewhere in right. a box where she doesn't <laughs> hear how angry at all about things like ghost in the shell right. like oh, I well know. I, you know but you have heard of, I mean, not that it hasn't been done, and guys like you've had brothers take songs that were written by white folks and put, put a different twist on them. Like Harry Hippie was actually a country tune done by uh, a country artist, and the guy said, hey, man, you can't, told Bobby Womack, you can't change that. You know? And when Bobby Womack put out Harry Hippie, everybody was like, what the fuck? I've never heard that like that. Right, because they took it, a whole nother way, whereas, you know, it's, you know, the only people that's redone any Earth, Wind, and Fire tunes has been a jazz dude, and uh, where well, you don't hear anything. It's a, a jazz guy doing it, so, anyway. yeah, that's, that's all that Sorry, that was my alarm for no, my that's, car. That's right. Okay. Um, I, I was, oh, uh, I was just thinking of uh, the Isley Brothers cover of uh, Seals and Croft's Summer Breeze. Yeah. There you go. I mean, which became a classic. But you, you, you're talking about a guy. You see who, what they added. They added, I mean, you got his brother who plays guitar like uh, um, Jimi Hendrix, and then you got Ron Isley, mm-hmm. which is, those guys have been making music since the 40s, 50s, 60s. I mean, they've been around for damn near 60 years. Oh, yeah. And that, that song will never go out of style. You can still put Summer Breeze on today, and people are going crazy about it. So there's mm-hmm. just certain songs you can probably, you know, yeah. You That's, know. Yeah, I, I guess the, the, the big lesson here is you don't have to stay in your lane if you don't suck when you leave it. Right. Maybe, maybe but I can you do my might, Nicki Minaj But you might want to think about it. <laughs> right. Sarah Smile. Before Who you would ever out. thought Sarah Smile? Hall and Oates, man. Hall and Oates. Classic. When, when Sarah Smile came out, they thought it was some brothers. When it came, they really, everyone thought it was black. That these guys were black. And so you put it on the radio, man, that jam. And this came out and said, hey. Well, they, yeah, I mean, they, <laughs> they have, you know, their background is Philly soul. Yeah, that's, you know, that's, that's exactly right. Where Daryl Hall and John Oates came out of. But it's funny, the, the flip side of it, you get, um, when Tracy Chapman's Fast Car came out, you know, not paying too much attention to the lyrics, at first I thought it was a white guy. Right. <laughs> And then, yeah. and then I saw the video, and I thought it was a black guy. Yeah. <laughs> and then I listened to the words. It was like, oh, oh, Tracy, it's a girl yeah. named Tracy. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And mm-hmm. she's got, and she has a very, she has a. She has mini, a beautiful voice. She's yeah, very uh, distinctive and yeah, very low distinctive register. sound. I, I was trying to figure out who she sound like, uh, but um, I was going to say Minnie Ripperton, but it's not Minnie Ripperton. No, that's yeah. that's Someone way different. Else, uh, well, yeah. years later, I think David Gray kind of sounded like uh, like Tracy Chapman, but yeah. 
that's that's another story altogether. Uh, and so many more stories, but so little time. So we do have to call it a week here but we will be back next week until then i want to thank you the listener for well being a listener uh we we do this largely for ourselves but also for you you are a consideration so thanks for listening if you like the show tell everyone you know if you don't keep it to yourself we don't mind i of course want to thank our panelists this week cat alvarado cat you got anything coming up yes i do you can catch me at the haha this wednesday the on their ha-ha. workout wednesdays see i'm going past there so i'm excited so you're right going to on. see me there a, a lot more often and if you want to hear more updates on nicaragua and that whole situation follow me on facebook or twitter at the cat alvarado cat with a c um, or on Facebook at Cat Alvarado Comedy. So I'm posting updates pretty regularly on the entire situation. So yeah, just follow me and you can hear what's happening. Right on. Thank you very much, Cat. Mr. Time and Ship? Uh, I don't have anything going on, but you can catch me at Facebook, um, Time and Ship at Facebook, or Time and Ship at Twitter. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Dr. David Robinson on the Twitter at Stand Up Fall Down. And of course, this show is on Facebook. And on Twitter, Facebook spelled out properly. On Twitter, we are at L E T S B T R E A S O N A B L. We take off the E's and pass on the savings to you. Also, want to thank uh, Will Durst for this week's burst. You can find him on Twitter at Will Durst and at WillDurst.com. We will be back next week. Hopefully, you will too. Until then, goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.